please join me in our call to worship with these words from Psalm 104. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. We will sing to the Lord as long as we live. We will sing praise to our God for we have May our meditations be pleasing to God, for we rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. As we worship the Lord our God today, may the peace of Christ be with you. Also Please take the time to share the peace of Christ with those around you. This morning I'll be reading from the New International Version of the Holy Bible. And the Gospel lesson comes from John 15, 26, 27. Real long section. <laughs> When the counselor comes, whom I will see to you from the send to you from the Lord, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. But you also must testify, for you have been seen with him from the beginning. And this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Continue worship if you return to page 243 in the hymn book. It's a sweet, sweet spirit. We will sing both verses. Good morning. Good morning. 
I'm reading from the New American Standard. It's a Bible I got when I graduated, got my master's degree in 1990 for the Sinclair Baptist. So I've enjoyed this Bible throughout the years. <clears throat> I'm reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. He was nice enough not to have me read 9 and 10, and you'll, <laughs> you'll hear it later. <laughs> The day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were bewildered, because they were each one hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and marveled, saying, Why, why are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear them in our own language to which we were born. <coughs> this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
All right, quick survey. Um, how many former or current cheerleaders do we have in the room? Hey, okay. all right, all right. And among also the rest of us, how many um, folks have ever been in a high school gym during a sporting event? All right, then no one will be alienated by the opening illustration of this sermon. Perhaps during a high school basketball game, the cheerleaders incite the crowd on their side of the gym to chant, we've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. How about you? How about you? Now, I'm not going to divide the room in half. That's just not the way I want to do church ever. Um, but you've probably been involved in this chanting and getting into a good back and forth chant with visitors uh, in your high school gym. And eventually, you really feel good that your side of the gym, we got more, right? I was convinced of this until the summer before my senior year in high school when I got to go to South Carolina Boys State. Any Boys State or Girl State alumni here? All right. Um, they taught us to be good citizens. <laughs> However, in between those lessons, um, perhaps we learned other things. And um, one of the things we learned to do at Boys State was you had to, you would win a ribbon for your, your town's flag by doing certain things. And one of those was about having, um, having good town spirit, uh, to which we started the chant. We got spirit, yes we do, we got spirit, how about you? And when the other cities would chant back, we would say, so what? <laughs> so what? Well, I took this back to my high school. <laughs> and uh, I did that during a basketball game. When we got the other side to chant back, I yelled, so what? And um, then I went to the principal's office the next day. <laughs> when we think about God's gift of the Holy Spirit uh, and this, this story that takes place on the day of Pentecost, there are a lot of wishes that I have about that. I would love to have some of the similar experiences that these folks did uh, following the ascension of Jesus, that um, those, those tangible signs of the Holy Spirit being present, I wish those were a, a part of our experiences sometimes. Um, I'm not going to hold out that it won't happen, but it could. But then it carries over to another story in Acts where there was a man named Simon the Magician, Simon Magus, and he turned to followers of Jesus when he saw that the Holy Spirit was being present and, and felt in people's lives. He said, sell me some of that. To which Jesus' disciples said, um, your money can go to hell with you. I will not give you chapter and verse because you might take that and use it the wrong way. <laughs> but we do have these kind of Pentecost takeaways from the story that we would love to see. We would love to hear that sound of a mighty rushing wind, a violent and rushing wind. We would, we, hey, wouldn't that be cool <laughs> to see tongues of fire on other people's heads? Would it, it would be so empowering to be able to speak languages and other people understand what you were saying. And what if after all of that, somebody preached explaining it and 3,000 people joined your church? Some of that we can replicate. And, uh, and on an occasion, I've been tempted to call on my friends who are part of the uh, Harley owners groups and say, Let's time this out right, and when I read the part about the violent and rushing wind, you and your buddies on your motorcycles just kind of do a few laps around the church. <clears throat> Can we even measure up to those events that took place on that Pentecost day there in Jerusalem 
And the answer is no, we can't. But maybe we're not supposed to. Perhaps we're not meant to uh, be able to have the same experiences that those early followers of Jesus had. Uh, or perhaps we are meant to have some experience that is very different from that. If we tried real hard, could we even come close? Well, maybe with some of the sounds, yes. Maybe with some of the sights, yes. Maybe we can even convince 3,000 people to join us in it. But we could try. We could come close. But it wouldn't quite work out. I've even gotten a little... Uh, cynical about telling you to wear red on Pentecost Sunday. But, uh, you know. But so what? Even if we could make all the sights and sounds happen, even if we could uh, throw a tremendous birthday party for the church, if we could make it look a lot like Pentecost and sound a lot like Pentecost. So what? Where is the substance behind the manifestation of God's Holy Spirit? You see, the substance of God's Holy Spirit coming into this room where the followers of Jesus met is that it blessed them. It empowered them. It helped them. There are a lot of lines you will hear in the Gospels that Jesus did this great thing, or Jesus said this important lesson, and the caveat will be, but his disciples didn't really understand it until the Holy Spirit came. So there's a blessing of the Holy Spirit that helps us all to understand, to figure it out, to see how the scriptures add up to the promise that Jesus has made. And let's go ahead and play the big card here. It's all about love, y'all. And so we see the Holy Spirit empowering God's people to speak on Jesus' behalf, empowered God's people to act on Jesus' behalf. And they were gifted in many different ways to be God's church, to be God's people. That can't be manufactured. That is a product of the real presence of God in our lives. That is the product of the living and loving resurrected presence of Jesus that blesses us to know that we belong to him, that blesses us to be filled with that love he has for us that cannot be conquered. And it blesses us to share that with others around us. That cannot be manufactured. What we can do is know this. What we can do is know this. The Holy Spirit speaks into our lives, not offering suggestions in our ears, but always telling us the truth telling us the truth about who we are and to whom we belong and why our relationship with God is so important. So the Spirit comes in order that we might know God's Spirit, in order that we might participate in the work that God wants to do in the world. And again, this is about love and as well to share this with others. So when it comes to a question about our faith, so what might be a very important one to try to answer. When the so what comes, how will we respond? How do folks know that the Holy Spirit of God abides in our hearts and lives? We answer the so what question by making a difference in the world. Often when we will talk about um, how do you know the Holy Spirit is present and real in people's lives, I think a good measure of that is to 
to go by that list of the fruits of the Spirit that you can read in Galatians 5.22. And in that, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, I don't want to give you a checklist by which to measure, but sometimes you might want to say, am I exhibiting some self-control? The Holy Spirit will ask you that question. But when we, when we see these proofs, that we believe this proof, these proofs that our faith is real, that the, the Spirit is alive and well in our lives, it doesn't make sense to only say, check, I have them. Yes, all of them, love, joy, peace, etc. Um, it, it won't be satisfying to the Spirit of God only to say, yeah, I, I, I possess these commodities. Rather, people need to see them coming from your life. The fruits of the Spirit are applied toward how well we share our faith. The fruits of the Spirit are applied and they result in us speaking a language that someone else understands. You may not have to go and pick up a lot of books or get on a, you know, specific websites or apps in order to learn a different language, in order to speak one that someone is longing to hear because the language of love is very universal joy peace patience kindness gentleness self-control goodness and faithfulness all of these things move us toward being able to demonstrate to someone else that this rich and steadfast love of God is real and this rich and steadfast love of God cannot be defeated, not even by death. When we apply the gifts of God's Spirit, when we put them to work in our lives and in the world around us, we definitely do speak a word that someone else has been desperately long to hear. <coughs> On that Pentecost day, there were folks who began to speak in a way, now this is a little more literal, they began to speak, and folks around them who spoke different languages, they heard it and understood. Now here's where we, we kind of need to dig into our, our scripture passage here and kind of, kind of do a bit, a, a bit closer reading. So um, we interrupt this sermon for a little bit of Bible study. Who's speaking? Who's doing the talking? You could see either that it's a small group, probably about as many people as we have here right now, uh, uh, folks who gathered together, the, those upper, that upper room community that um, found themselves locked in the room at the end of the uh, Gospel of Luke, only for Jesus to show up in the, in the midst of them. Um, they're still meeting there. Or there's even a little bit larger group here. Um, just before believers get together and have a, a short election to find someone to replace Judas, so just before they bring Matthias into the 12 as one of the apostles of Jesus, um, Luke tells us here in Acts that there were about 120 believers. So that group could be as large as 120 or maybe a little bit smaller but it also was a group of folks that included women. So you have the 12 apostles, other believers, Jesus' mother, and other women who were there. And so um, the folks who are speaking in languages that other people will understand is an all, already a very uh, diverse group the, considering the standards by which we look at things sometimes, that men and women, possibly up to 120 of them, were doing this. And to whom did they speak? 
There were many people in Jerusalem from many different places. And one day, if I'm mad at you, I will make you read proper downs in the Bible. So always be discerning when I call you and say, hey, can you read this Sunday? There's also a special line in the Ten Commandments from certain translations that I would like for you to read. So these folks who were gathered in Jerusalem, they had come there for a big festival. <laughs> and Pentecost is, is part of this big harvest festival. And within it, on a special day, they celebrate God's gift of the Ten Commandments to the children of Israel. And so among these folks... And I'll just say, everybody from everywhere was in Jerusalem that day. And they say, aren't all these folks speaking to us Galileans? So how is it that we hear each in our own language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Let the Holy Spirit talk to you about these two factors, who was doing the speaking, who was preaching that day, men and women alike, and who was receiving the message, everybody from everywhere and it is strong proof of, of what the New Testament scholar Will the Gaffney explains as being explicit inclusivity the 120 spoke to a big crowd of people probably 3,000 or more and what were they preaching about? They spoke to all those folks in a language that they could understand about God's deeds of power. And I think we're already been hitting at it pretty hard. It has been all about love. These deeds of power that they were expressing. Namely, that Jesus is alive and this means that God is doing a new thing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that all of the followers of Jesus are able to live out and express in their lives. And this deed of God's power is true for you and I today, that we can live out the resurrection of Jesus now, that we find our faith rooted in the new thing that God is doing and this is something that death itself cannot even defeat. So when the love of Jesus takes priority in our lives, and that becomes the lens through which we focus all things, when we do this, we really are speaking a language that folks understand. We're speaking a language that folks desperately need to hear. When we live by the Spirit, carrying out, doing what the fruits of the Spirit lists tell us to do, we're telling a story. We're telling a story that you and I are a part of. We're telling a story that everyone is a part of. And then here comes the question, so what? Well, here's the so what. The Holy Spirit lets us know, tells us the story of God's deeds of power. That nothing, not one thing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.